Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday, June 4th, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. We're still watching the Caribbean here. This uh, Invest 93L disturbance continues to very slowly organize in the Western Caribbean down here. And if we look closely this morning at the satellite pictures, you'll see a very broad and elongated circulation beginning to form in the Gulf of Honduras. There are indeed some west winds near the coast here, near the surface. The surface map does show that with a couple of sta stations showing west-southwest winds. The pressure here showing 1,015 is wrong. Uh, the actual pressure is more like 1,009 in this area. So we have a very broad low beginning to form here, but this is likely not the feature that will actually get tracked northward because the way these things usually work is this is a pretty broad monsoonal type low and it's pretty hard to get this to move. Usually what happens is uh, something else will form underneath the deep convection and take over as the primary circulation center over time. And right now uh, what we have is actually a tropical wave axis uh, over the Cayman Islands, you'll see some southwest winds in the mid-levels uh, with the alto cumulus or alto stratus moving toward the northeast and uh, southeast winds in the low levels and then turning eastward around this broad low. And so what we have is actually a wave axis somewhere in here uh, through the Cayman Islands. We have southeast winds coming in here and then turning to the east. And this is uh, providing the focus for convergence and turning of the wind, this is where the greatest vorticity or spin is. And there isn't very much spin with the system yet, but we do at least have this kink in the wind flow uh, indicated by this wave axis. Now, the mean flow is something like this out of the southeast and east-southeast through this area. And you have this wave axis cutting through this low-level jet, and it's tilted a little bit against this mean flow out of the east-southeast. So what that means is when the wave is tilted over like this, it's going to amplify as it moves toward the northwest because it's tilted against the background east-southeasterly flow. And so by the time the wave axis rotates around to the Yucatan Channel in this area, it's going to be more upright and likely more amplified. And so what you'll have is this broad low sitting down in the Gulf of Honduras and then this wave axis extending to its north with an amplified area of thunderstorms and perhaps a secondary low center begin to form near the Yucatan Channel or the northern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. And so what will likely happen is you'll have this and whatever comes out of the southeast cause a reformation of a new low near this area in about a day or a day and a half. And then this will take off toward the northeast toward Florida later on. So that's probably the evolution that we're looking at here. And then it gets uh, more difficult for the system over time because here on the water vapor imagery, we can see this large scale trough still digging over the northwestern Gulf of Mexico and Texas. And so you can see the cirrus cloud shield moving out of the southwest and across your screen from left to right. And so whatever low does form here and move up into the Gulf, it is going to get sheared. And it really already is getting pretty sheared. Just the fact that the monsoon low center has formed back here and all the convection is off to the east kind of tells you that there's already um, some shear from west to east across this area and it only gets stronger as the system moves toward the north so it's very unlikely that this is going to strengthen substantially as it comes out of the Caribbean but it could very well acquire the name Colin and get uh, designated a tropical storm by the National Hurricane Center however in the situation as we talked about yesterday these systems are very similar to what we typically see in early June in the Gulf. And regardless of whether they get named, regardless of whether this is actually a tropical storm, there's going to be wind and heavy rain affecting Florida. And so the impacts of this system are pretty much set in stone already, regardless of whether this actually becomes a tropical storm. And the only difference uh, might be some of the winds that come with it. But honestly, uh, the impacts of heavy rain are going to happen regardless and so folks should already be prepared for a pretty nasty weekend here and Monday and even into Tuesday uh, coming up into Florida as this moves north. Talking about the steering of this really quick, this is the GFS 12Z 42 hour forecast valid at 2 a.m. on Monday morning and so the system is down here this is 500 millibar winds and vorticity and shading you can see this broad trough over the northeast United States and uh, with this trough over the Gulf of Mexico as well what we have is a southwesterly steering flow in the mid-levels and uh, this again prevents the due north kind of path and instead will likely bring this across the Florida Peninsula somewhere and then quickly uh, northeast out to sea after it crosses Florida exactly where it crosses Florida 
Well, it's probably going to be somewhere in the Big Bend area north of Tampa here, though it kind of depends on exactly where the center reforms. A sheared system like this will have the center jump all over the place at times underneath the convection. But again, the exact placement of the center is not really going to matter in this situation for folks in Florida because anywhere near and east southeast of the center is going to get a large area of heavy rain and gusty winds. And uh, to the left of the track, not going to see that much, probably going to be... Um, fairly uh, decent weather compared to the right hand side of the track of the system but this is likely to come across in the big bend of florida area somewhere around there with everybody near and south of that getting very heavy rain and gusty winds so again WPC preset forecast showing all that rain. Primary impact of this system, although some storm surge near the coast is possible with a long fetch of southwesterly winds, especially in the Tampa Bay area where funneling can take place. So you could get a little bit of surge there, a couple of feet, and then uh, some strong winds of tropical storm force are likely, even if this somehow doesn't get named Colin, uh, tropical storm force winds are likely there. It's just a question of how organized the circulation is, but the impacts are likely to be the same regardless of whether the Hurricane Center gives it a name. But right now they do have a high chance that they will end up naming this at some point. And so we'll continue watching the system closely. A couple of days to watch it yet. Monday will be the worst day and perhaps Tuesday morning as well. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.